Hi guys, my name is Roy Schroeder. I'm uh, involved in some NB NDI news groups and Facebook pages and stuff like that. Um, I posted that I had finished a project where I used an N or a Raspberry Pi as an NDI receiver and also it works as a transmitter. Um, somebody asked me if I could give them some step-by-step -step instructions on how I went about and did that. So here I am. This is my first YouTube video, so hope it comes out okay. Um, first of all, a disclaimer, I am not an expert at NDI. I'm actually relatively new to it. I'm not an expert at Raspberry Pi um, either. I am just kind of a self-taught geeky nerd that loves technology and do a lot of things with that. So anyway, so without further ado, so you'll see here's what I use for my project. I bought a... Um, NDI, or I'm sorry, a Raspberry Pi starter kit, uh, which includes the um, cables. There's a HDMI, mini, micro HDMI to um, regular HDMI adapter cable. There's a power supply with USB C. It includes a fan, two heat sinks. The heat sinks go right onto those components there. And then here's the Raspberry Pi motherboard along with a uh, Raspberry Pi aluminum enclosure. So, and then I also had to get a uh, micro USB. I used a 32 gig for my application. Seems to work fine. And I also have a USB keyboard that I use for the setup of the system. Made it a lot easier. So, setting up the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is install the operating system onto the micro SD card. It's really pretty straightforward and I've got a little, uh, let me show you right here. So if you go to raspberrypi.org slash download you can download the latest version of the Raspberry Pi image for Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu, whatever your flavor is. And once you get that downloaded, go through the installer, and it's it's really pretty straightforward and easy to do. You've got to have your obviously your uh, micro SD card in an adapter into your computer somehow. Okay, so then once you get that um, set up, then you've got to do the assembly of the components here, which is really very straightforward. Uh, there's two heat, two heat sinks here. You just they got sticky back glue on them. You just mount those on the components. Um, and then there's a fan here that mounts to pin 1, which I think is that pin, and 14. So 1 and 14 on the header. Um, just slide the PCB into the aluminum enclosure and button it up and then slide in the SD card, which is on the back side of the, uh, the device here. So then you power it up. Um, you got to plug the Pi power into the HDMI C port, which is right there, and then you go through the adapter cable and use the you know, two uh, mini HDMI ports. You plug in either one of those; it doesn't make a difference. And then I used um, my USB keyboard mouse plugged in over there. And then turn it on. Apply power. So when it first comes up, you're going to see a rainbow. I've got this uh, rainbow type uh, screen here. I've got this set up on my 52-inch uh, Samsung TV, the HDMI. It's not 4K, but it does a uh, job just great. So once you power it up, you're going to see this. I took a little video. Let's see if I can get it started. And then the screen's going to go blank. And then in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a couple of raspberries pop up. And then, if all goes well, you'll see a desktop screen pop up. Takes a second or two. I think it took a little bit longer the first time. So there you go. So that's a Raspberry Pi desktop that you just saw there. So the next thing you have to do is you have to connect your Pi to the internet. Um, if you hover your mouse in the upper right hand corner over the uh, Wi-Fi icon, um, I think you might have to right click on it. Uh, pull up all the available networks that you see out there, uh, log on to your appropriate network and password, and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, you could also plug your 
uh, Ethernet cable into the back of the Pi uh, to the Ethernet port, which incidentally does work best for NDI. Uh, and then if you hover, once you're connected, if you hover over the icon there, you're going to see a IP address here. Why don't you write that down? Um, it's going to come in handy for future configuration. We'll get to that in just a second. So once you're connected to the Pi and you've got the Pi up and running, um, you need to set up the software. So the way I did it is you see these two icons here. This is the um, terminal mode. It brings up a window and this is the web browser. So you have to turn on both of those. Uh, fire them up on your web browser. Go to Pi, or uh, I'm sorry, HTTPS slash slash decaffeine or dicaffeine.com and um, let me show you what that's going to look like when you get there so this is the web page for dicaffeine it's just very very simple just one time or one page there's no sub pages or anything uh, talk to you a little bit about the installation here and I'll go over to that over that in a second I just want to show you what that looks like so once you're there, um, you got the browser open. Well, let's see. I'm going to show you my next slide right here, um, how I had them set up side by side. This is the way. This is again looking at my TV. So on the left-hand window, I've got the um, terminal mode for the Pi, and then on the right side, I've got the browser. So what you have to do is you got to take, cut this, copy this line you'll see three or four, I'm sorry four lines of code here grab the first one copy it move it over to, to terminal mode right click and say paste and then when you do that and you hit enter you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff happening here and uh, that's a good thing as long as you don't get any errors uh, do that for each four lines of code that you saw there And incidentally, I just copied and pasted the uh, code here. So notice that the first line there, that's a capital O, not a zero. I think I got a little confused with that the first time. All right. So once you do all that and then reboot your Pi, you should have something, a window that comes up like this. You'll get the rainbow like you saw before, but you'll see an icon here uh, called Dicaffeine Player. So once you click on that, or double click on that, you're going to get a uh, admin screen um, to log into, and the default password is admin. And from here, I'm going to switch over to the uh, my internet connection, and I'm real time here, so I'm going to type in the word admin and hit enter. And this is what the screen looks like. So a couple of notes here is I found this a little bit confusing. The uh, low resolution, high resolution. So when it's to the right, that means it's on. When it's to the left, that means it's off. So it, it, it just seemed awkward to me, but I, kept, I wanted it on the higher resolution, so I turned this off. And this is what it looks like when you have NDI um, going on the network. And it has to be the sub same subnet also. Uh, you'll see a variety of different uh, NDI sources that you can click on. So I can click on my camera. I can click on one of my screens. And then I hit play. And that will immediately turn over or turn on the image that you saw onto the big screen TV. I don't have an image of that, um, but um, trust me, it does work. You can also, I have I played with this a little bit, you can also stream. I hooked up my USB camera as a source to the Pi, and it showed up here as a source, and I uh, was able to set a couple of parameters here and start the stream and I was able to pick that up on other NDI readers so to speak. Um, 
Yeah, but if you want to do, if you want to do that by the license, it's fifty dollars to make it a source, I guess. So um, the other thing is, if you save whatever is your mainstream here, will be saved, and then if you hit auto start, auto run after start, and save that next time the. Uh, Next time the uh, machine machine runs um, the reboots, it'll uh, start up automatically right to that source. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it, um, Mr. Roy. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, if you did, uh, leave me some feedback. I'd be happy to hear from anybody. Thanks, bunch. Talk to you later.